morning ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's session on demystifying the technology puzzle for financial inclusion in India. Till not too very long ago, banking services involved half a day of work. Whether it was withdrawing, transferring, depositing money actually meant standing in queues. Fast forward to today, I don't think too many of us have ever entered a bank branch unless it is absolutely required. Most of the transactions are very comfortably done over the internet or mobile. All this is thanks to technology. Our generations and the ones to come are very rapidly moving away from the assisted banking models. And this has been possible because of agencies like NPCI and UIDI who have taken a lot of work, who have put in a lot of work in making this possible. To set the tone, because how the technology, which the Aadhaar is going to change the entire uh, the way of uh, delivery of services, is any service, typically financial surveys or maybe the government surveys, whatever. <coughs> so our Aadhaar, the UIDI, Unique Identification of India, vision is to empower the resident of India, they are the residents. So, it's not that only for the Indian citizen. We are giving other whosoever is residing the last six months in India. So he or she is entitled for this unique number. And we have given a digital platform to authenticate anytime, anywhere. And see, why uh, we are talking about this ID business? See, uh, typically with respect to the financial group, see, banks are here so many years. And RBI is trying hard that uh, to reach uh, at the remotest corner of our country and uh, to open the bank, bank account. And even uh, just forget about the remote internet. In Mumbai also, uh, there are resident persons who are not having the bank account as a deal and who are they? Even they are earning. See, a uh, taxi driver is earning 25,000 to 30,000 per month. Per where to save the money? And uh, we have learned some <coughs> stories that one has to pay. Instead of earning the interest, they have to pay something to somebody to keep the money safe. Because when they go after six months or uh, once in a year to their native, they take their money with them. So all these things, why they are not able to open the bank account? So it, there's the absence of the ID because they don't have any identity. So now with this other identity, so because of this absence of the identity, <coughs> they are not able to bank account or they are not able to avail any services. This is what this UIDI is doing to give a robust ID to all the resident and it is going to be an enabler for targeted and efficient delivery of services and uh, of course the digital ID for the Digital India Initiative or Government of India, it, one of the uh, major pillar in this entire digital India. So, and uh, ID when we say, usually the, all across the globe when we talk about the ID, ID so it may be for the security reasons or immigration reason or any other reason. But here the objective is totally government. How to use this ID for the boost the economy of the country or change the way of delivery of services. And with this ID, we can do the authentication anytime, one is to one. Okay, anybody can uh, uh, question with the UIDI. Okay, this is the Aadhaar number and this is the person's name, whether it's uh, true or false. So we respond in yes or no. So uh, from the central ID. And just uh, briefly, I will just touch in a minute. Because I think in the hall, uh, who are resident of uh, India uh, must be having Aadhaar. But they know okay, this is the Aadhaar and this is the 12 digit number. But what is that 12 digit number? Number one, it's a random number. You can't do any profiling using this number. And uh, we don't say, or uh, we do not advocate that you should have a card sort of thing or a smart card sort of thing. If you can remember your 12 digit number, you simply walk in. So uh, the bank account opening, see, just walk in the bank branch, say, this is my 12 digit number. And they will take the number and give your biometric account is open. So there is no need to carry anything with you. Maybe for some person who are not able to remember the number, maybe they can just jot down the same number on a piece of paper, maybe they can just, uh, just a thick paper, maybe get laminated. So that's why when we give the cards, so bottom uh, 
portion of that letter, Aadhaar letter, you can just carry with you in the wallet, just to remember the number. And the number that we have given is the eternal number. We are not going to reuse even after the death. And we are uh, including the children also. Even by God, uh, we are uh, enrolling all the children. And the uh, uniqueness that is all ten fingers and the iris. And we are doing the biometric duplication and issuing this uh, unique number. And we have tested maybe uh, because we are receiving lots of things that I have not received the other number. And then we uh, check, we find that this person is already enrolled. And the second time when he enrolled, and he is not getting number. And first time when he enrolled, maybe somehow he missed, uh, he, he was not able to receive the letter. So then we give the other number. So one can have only one other number. And uh, this entire data is secure and we are maintaining the privacy and it's the online ID. So uh, I'll just rush to because, uh, uh, because of the possibility of time. And why I'm telling what, how after uh, uh, going through the details of Aadhaar and Aadhaar platform, you can also think what innovation you can also do uh, in terms of the financial inclusion or any uh, service application. Our next speaker today is Mr. Dilip Aspe, the Chief Operating Officer of the National Payment Corporation of India. NPCI is an umbrella organization for all retail payment systems in India. During the last five years, the organization has grown multifold from clocking 2 million transactions a day to over 20 million transactions today. They started as a single service of switching of interbank ATM transactions. However, now the range of services has expanded to, to include EBTs, check clearing, IMPS, uh, and the most popular Rupee card. Uh, Rupee was started as an answer to Visa and MasterCard, and it's proliferating quite extensively. Today we have Mitstas Mitstasbe, who has been instrumental in designing, building, operationalizing, and managing large-scale payment processing platforms. We would like to tap into his understanding of the switching industry <coughs> and his, its ability to unlock opportunities and specifically understand the role NPCI has to play in achieving the financial inclusion targets and how it continues to innovate going forward. Over to you, sir. Thanks, Sushma. Uh, I've been uh, with NPCI a long time now, I think uh, seven years, completing seven years. Uh, employee number one of NPCI. So, seen NPCI starting from that two million uh, number which uh, RBI gave us the system and growing all the other payment systems. Uh, we, uh, we started with uh, almost the, the same time when uh, the UIDI started. So 2000 and when we first met Mr. Nilipini and uh, uh, Mr. Sharma and we thought you know, it can create a lot of value add together, right? So and you know after five years, six years, you know the country is uh, in the benefit uh, of uh, the, the, the joint work which NPCI and UIDI uh, did today. Uh, if you look at the work what NPC has done, I would segment into three areas. Work with one first is the work with UIDI. As Sumesh explained, we uh, we we uh, along with UIDI, we thought we could create a system by which the money can come inside the customer, money can come to the customer, and customer can take the money out, right? Customer. So uh, so we built the Aadhaar payment bridge, which has uh, Aadhaar to the bank account entry, right? So government just gives us the file of Aadhaar number and account and the we process the file, money goes to the customer's account. Approximately 750 banks are live and customer having account in regional rural bank, district cooperative bank, the cooperative bank, he can, and he can get the access to the government benefit transfers. So that's the advantage number one. The second point is when the customer wants to take the money out because the, the leakage is issue what uh, Sanmesh was saying, we said the customer can use the biometric uh, uh, authentication on the micro ATM and take the money out of his account. Right? So we are very sure that point number one is money is gone to this, this person and money is taken out by this person. Right? So we can prove the trail that you know it, the money is going to the right people and right people are using the money. Right? So that's that's the one thing what we did with uh, UIDI. Of course, there are many products came along. One is the authentication, second is the EKYC, then the demographic authentication. So you, so, so the so the UIDI services stack grew over the period uh, to, to help the banks, corporates, and and the private uh, players. Uh, NPC parallelly was also working on some of the initiatives such as uh, IMPS and Rupee, which is uh, 
uh, which is kind of uh, uh, the new to the country from a from its own uh, indigenous standpoint, but uh, somewhere existing in the world, right? So, for example, UK had the the faster payments, right? So we we thought you know we could implement that kind of a system in India. Uh, Visa Mastercard has been here last 20, 25 years, but we thought you know, building rupee can give a lot of value add to the banks because in two ways. One is we can we can definitely reduce the cost. Uh, 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 for the banks, but uh, we also thought that we can build the localized product for, for the banks, which are which are more like a domestic customizations, which which are not uh, possible in the in the other international card schemes. Uh, so IMPS, uh, we uh, we started about uh, five years back. It took some time to build, uh, uh, you know, the confidence, uh, the initial issues, uh, architectural issues. I must. Uh, but now I think IMPS is scaling up, and we, uh, you know, just to give an example, last month we did about. Uh, touching 20,000 crore uh, is value on IMPS in the in last month, right? So on an annual uh, basis, we are somewhere uh, near uh, uh, 3 lakh crore as an annual turnover on uh, IMPS, which is uh, which is far more than the debit card uh, does in the country, and uh, soon we'll cross over the debit uh, the credit cards as well. So from that standpoint, IMPS as a as a payment system has uh, has grown on its uh, own. The third part which we have been doing uh, about is the is the legacy services which are the mandatory and monopolistic services which RTI handed over as an operational work to NPCI. That includes the National Financial Institute which is an interbank ATM clearing uh, system. Uh, it includes the check clearing system. It includes uh, uh, the the ECA, erstwhile ECS and uh, the, the NACH uh, platform. Of course, we made a lot of changes into that but we call it as a legacy business and we run it uh, uh, again, 24 by 7, 365 days. So NPCI now today process uh, close to a billion transactions uh, in um, uh, about in a, in a month. Uh, all uh, processed by us. Uh, we uh, we believe in self sufficiency. We build our technology platform. Even though uh, we buy the te uh, the technology, we, we believe in customizing it ourselves. So we kind of build a uh, solid technology. Uh, Backbone and our ambition is that NPCI should be used, uh, looked at as a as a transaction powerhouse uh, for the for the country. Now, looking at the 2.0 of NPCI, which lasts one one and a half years, uh, we have been looking at what are the new things what NPCI could do, leveraging all the all the platforms it has built over the last uh, few years. Then we thought about what are the limitations of IMPS. So we we looked at IMPS and and pool was not there, sir, right? So debit was not there. Uh, it didn't have the right user experience, right? From a consumer standpoint, the onboarding took a lot of time. The system had its own resistance as well as the mobile banking registration, right? So, so it's kind of tough for a person to onboard to IMP. Once the once the customer is onboarded, then making IMPS was very easy. But you know, the, from the from the right from the word go, it was tough for a customer to to get into the IMPS. So we thought you know, we could we could simplify that uh, aspect. So we built uh, we thought about UPI again working with the uh, iSpirit. Mr. Nilakini has been guiding us on uh, UPI. So we took about a year, year and a half time to, to architect this UPI. And while architecting the UPI, we, uh, we kind of took, uh, were taken care of right from the word go how customer downloads the app, how customer does the uh, banking, where the, the customer has the account. So kind of interoperability issues in the mobile payments which exist uh, today. Single factor, uh, single click uh, checkout, which the experience which being, being a bank account, he doesn't get. He gets on wallet, but he doesn't get on a bank account. So those kind of things we try to add up uh, in the in the in the UPR. Uh, virtual address is, is is another additional thing. Uh, you know, today uh, if somebody wants to make the one one time payments, sharing a eleven digit alphanumeric IFSC code and the fifteen digit uh, numeric uh, account number, it's very very tough for a consumer to communicate to somebody or uh, you know for the P2P payments. So we thought virtual ID can, which is very similar to email ID, can help a lot of uh, uh, low ticket uh, transaction migration from cash to electronic is possible. Uh, so that's on the on the IMPS front. Uh, Rupee standpoint, we, we looked at you know how we build contactless transit, uh, uh, those kind of localized applications which are required by the Indian systems, and uh, uh, we have in fact uh, now in the, in the process of rolling out first uh, uh, customized contactless uh, prepaid solution. For uh, the Bangalore Metro along with the uh, Axis Bank, so these are the few uh, you know innovations we are trying to layer back on on it. Uh, there are some futuristic products which uh, which uh, uh, which are also in the process, such as the Bharat Bill Pay uh, system. Uh, we are working on credit card. Uh, we are also working on the uh, the electronic toll collection, uh, interoperable electronic toll collection system, 
right? So you can see the tag on your vehicle and you can just pass through without worrying about who has uh, who's the the primary uh, banker of the of the road, right? So this is a system we are working on. So this year itself we are launching about five products. We have launched a couple of them till now. So three are still in the pipeline. So so we believe that uh, you know we we are at the cusp of uh, you know the electronic payments uh, revolution, right? So. So today we are crossing one billion. We are hoping to reach five billion in the next few years time. So that's all from me. I am not. I don't have a presentation. I'm sorry for that. But you guys can get in touch with me if any further queries or any doubts. Thanks. Um, our last but definitely not the least speaker for the day is Ms. Shantini Kumar of Paytm. Paytm, as some of you may know, has been making headlines for being a pioneer in multiple areas be it introducing a wallet or innovating in ways of customer engagement to the most recent free Wi-Fi launch. Recently, Paytm entered the banking space by getting the license for the payment bank. Uh, knowing their technology inclination, Paytm Bank would be someone who everyone would like to keep an eye out for. We have the pleasure of having Shindini Kumar with us, who is the CEO of Paytm Bank. There couldn't be, have been a better person to head this innovative new age banking entity than Shinjini, who comes with the background of having worked with RBI and PwC in leading the banking and financial services regulatory practice. Shinjini, we are curious to hear your take on how technology innovation and adoption can disrupt the business you will soon be rolling out. 